They have been in the U.S. for so long that most people don't even know the species or plant is invasive or exotic. Curly pondweed is dangerous because it can clog waterways, can survive in habitats that most native species cannot survive in, and competes with native plants for things such as habitats and food. It can also form mats on the surface of water, causing trouble for boating activity. Reed canary grass is another invasive plant. It comes from Europe, Asia, and North America. They were planted throughout the U.S. to control forage and erosion. Reed canary grass is a problem because it's an invading forest sites and limiting tree generation. Because it takes all the nutrients that the tree needs, few plants can grow in areas dominated by reed canary grass. Eurasian milfoil is yet another invasive plant and threatening our area. It comes from Europe, Asia, and South Africa and is believed to have gotten here by boats and birds. Eurasian milfoil is dangerous because it can attach itself to boats and water toys. Once on the boat, it can get into motors, breaking them. It also crowds out native plants and it is very hard to remove from a lake or a pond. Another invasive plant is called purple loosestrife. Purple loosestrife comes from Europe, Asia, Northwestern Africa, and Southeastern Australia. It got to the U.S. because it was originally distributed as festive ornaments. It's also spread through roads, canals, and drainage ditches. Purple loosestrife is bad because it spreads very rapidly and forms dense stands that aren't good for nesting areas and cover for native animals. There are still many more invasive species invading the natural areas in and around Chicago, but a specific one that will be very dangerous to our environment if it reaches us is called Asian carp. Asian carp are fish from Asia. They were brought into the United States for the aquaculture industry, which is where they breed and collect fish. The aquaculture industry was breeding Asian carp so they could grind them up and use them in fertilizer. Um, then they escaped the aquaculture industry and they went up the Mississippi River and are almost in Lake Michigan. There are four different kinds of Asian carp. Bighead carp, silver carp, black carp, and grass carp. Bighead carp and silver carp are the two that impact us the most. Asian carp eat nonstop and a lot of the things that they eat are the things that native species eat too. They feed on grass, plankton, snails, and mussels. This makes it hard for native species to find food. Asian carp can be dangerous because, to our environment because they cannot be caught very easily by fishermen because they are filter feeders, which means they don't take bait very easily. Asian carp also reproduce very rapidly. A female carp can carry up to one million eggs in a lifetime. Asian carp are a problem because they do not have any predators in Chicago. There is no North American fish big enough to eat Asian carp. Eventually, since there are so many Asian carp, they'll run out of grass, plankton, snails, and mussels to eat. If this does happen, Asian carp could start to eat native fish. If this happens, it is possible that Lake Michigan could end up with be being populated with just Asian carp. Now that we've told you all about the invasive species impacting our community, we want to show you a visual of what it looks like if they were to all spread and completely wipe out the native fish population. We are going to do an activity to show you why having biodiversity in a community is so important to our ecosystem. Biodiversity means having diversity or variety among plant, the plant and animal species in an environment. Biodiversity is important to an ecosystem because it leads to ecosystem stability. It is also important because if there are a bunch of, or a variety of species that all provide the same function and one disappears, the other species can take over and provide that function. If there is no variety, the environment will suffer. Um, as you can see, you have two cups of candy spread out before you. In one cup, there is blue, green, yellow, orange, and red M&Ms. These M&Ms represent different native species. The orange M&Ms represent zooplankton, the yellow M&Ms represent the fish lake trout, the green ones represent algae, the blue ones represent a dragonfly, and the red ones represent the fish lake sturgeon. These are all native species in our area. The other cup represents invasive species. Notice how they are all brown because they create a loss of biodiversity in our community. The raisins represent zebra mussels, the junior mints represent purple lake stripe, the chocolate chips represent Asian carp, and the brown m and represent curly pondweed. These are all invasive species we talked about earlier in our presentation. Right now, we would like you to dump out your cup with the native species onto the table. If you would like, you can form the m and into the shape of a river to make it more realistic.
When told to do so, please play, place the colored M&Ms back into the cup. You can also dump out the cup with invasive species onto the table, but do not put them with the native species yet. We would also like to remind you to not eat the candy until you are told to do so. In front of you are cards with scenarios on them. Anyone who wants to read the scenario, one we ask, please raise your hand and we will call you. Please do what the scenario is to tell you now. If you do, you will discover an interesting result at the end. Also, if you run out of a native species and are told to remove that native species from your river, simply just remove another species. Same goes for invasive species. Um, now that you know the rules of the activity, do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, can you can just remove me um, another one. Yeah, that, that was kind of a problem. Okay, um, is everyone ready? Okay, does anyone want to read the first scenario card? <coughs> Read the first scenario? Is that what you want? Read the yeah, scenario. the first one. Um, purple moose stripe invades. Replace three dragonflies and two algae with three purple moose stripes. Dragonflies can't get through the purple moose stripes, and new algae cannot grow on the bank as a purple moose stripe takes all the nutrients and blocks the sunlight. So now you can remove your Thank you. 
and students our age so they know that just one person can have a huge impact on this issue. We have also started another project. Invasive Species Awareness Month is this May. We plan to ho host a big event in our school gym that will be open to the general public. We will share our educational presentation. There will be games so people can realize how dangerous invasive species really are, and there will be lots of information on what the public can do to help. We want people to walk away from our event feeling like they have a moral obligation to help solve the invasive species problem. Now that we've told you what organizations are doing and what we are doing, but we haven't told you what you can do. There are so many little things that you can do to help the environment. The first step is you can take is learning to identify invasive species in your area. You may think, how can this help? How, this can help because an example is Asian carp are used as bait fish and then dumped into rivers because people don't know what they look like. This, this has led to many invasive species spreading in the U.S. After you learn about invasive species, what they look like, and what is being done about them, it is very important that you share your knowledge with others. If you teach others like we have taught you today, they can pass on that information and so on. The more people who know about the dangers of invasive species, the more people who can help. Another option is to volunteer. There are organizations out there that are looking for your help. Near our community, there's an organization called Chicago Wilderness. And Ch Chicago Wilderness has different dates set up where people can go out and to volunteer and help weed invasive plants and replant native ones. There are bound to be all kinds of organizations like this one in your neighborhood. You can also write letters to newspapers and news political representatives to support invasive species efforts. Government officials have lots of power and can do a lot to help with the invasive species problem. Now that we have talked about what an invasive species is, different kinds and their dangers done in activity on why having a variety in your ecosystem is so important, and talked about what you can do to help, we want to do a trivia game to see how much you learned. We'll ask you true or false questions, multiple choice questions, and ask you to identify invasive species. Let's get started. <laughs> Zebra mussels got to the United States by ballast water dumping. True. The answer is true. Zebra mussels got to the United States by ballast water dumping. The second question is, Asian carp originate from where? A, the United States, B, Australia, C, Asia, or D, South America? C, Asia. The answer is C, Asia. <laughs> um, for the third question, we'd like you to identify which invasive species is this. Yeah, it's purple. Um, what are the four types of Asian carp? Big fin, silver, gold, and grass carp. Big head, gray, black, and grass carp. Big fin, silver, black, and brass carp. Or big head, silver, black, and grass carp. Go ahead, one time. Uh, me. D. No. The answer is D. <laughs> okay, what do you, we would like you to identify which invasive species this is. Does anyone know here? It's not on the key. Around <laughs> Gobi? <laughs> that is correct. It is round Gobi. The last question is another true or false question. The only way that you can help with the, this issue is by learning about invasive species. False. The answer is false. Yeah, the answer is false. Um, there is so much that you can do to help solve this issue, and most of it barely takes any effort. From this presentation, we hope you took away not only the information on invasive species and why they are dangerous, but we also hope you took away that as an individual, you can do so much to help your community. We hope this presentation really inspired you to get active in this issue. 
Thank you so much for listening in and enjoy the rest of the conference. And also, um, you can take your candy if you want. You don't have to.